In today's video, we'll be looking at one-step unit conversions. So you've already learned how to count atoms, you've learned what a mole is, the chemistry mole, and you've learned how to find molar mass. So in today's video, we'll be looking at converting back and forth between moles and atoms or molecules and between grams and moles. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we're going to start with a moles to atoms or molecules problem. So let's calculate the number of atoms in 7.66 moles of potassium. Notice we're using atoms here because we're talking about potassium, which is just an element. So let's take the value that we've been given in the problem, which is this 7.66 moles. And we're actually going to write that in our T chart, which we see down here. And remember, we used T charts back when we did unit conversions last semester. So let's put the value we were given in the problem in the upper left hand corner. We don't write anything in the lower left hand corner. So I put an X there. Now, how do we go from moles to atoms? Well, I have this chart here and I'm going to give this to you at the end as well so that you can copy it down. It'll be a full chart. So we start with moles because we have moles by the value we were given and we are converting to atoms. So we're going moles to atoms. We're moving up, which means we're going to be doing this multiplying by Avogadro's number. So let's plug in the information that we need which we need Avogadro's number. Here it is in case you have forgotten. So if I have moles on top, I'm going to be writing moles on the bottom now. And my 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms goes on top. So I'm multiplying by Avogadro's number. So I, if I'm multiplying, it goes on the top. If I were dividing, it would go on the bottom. Plug this in the calculator and you'll find this value for the number of atoms of potassium in this many moles of potassium. Now let's do the opposite. Let's start with molecules. So we have this many molecules and we want to know how many moles this equals. So again, let's take the value we were given in the problem. We're going to write that in the upper left hand corner. Then I'm going to put an X here so we know not to write anything. And here's my chart. So I'm starting with molecules in this case and I'm going to moles. If I'm going from molecules to moles, that means I'm going to be dividing by Avogadro's number. So Here's Avogadro's number again. <clears throat> and since I'm dividing by Avogadro's number this time, my one mole is going to go on the top and Avogadro's number will go on the bottom. So molecules and molecules. So molecules is on the top and the bottom, so it will cancel out. We're dividing now because if we have something on the top and a value other than one on the bottom, we're going to be dividing. And we'll find 14.6 moles of CO2. When you plug this in the calculator, make sure to put parentheses around this 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd so that there are no calculator errors. Now let's go from grams to moles. So we want to know how many moles are in this many grams of iron 3 bromide, which is FeBr3. I've given you FeBr3 this time, but in the future, you'll be writing out the chemical formula yourself. So let's take the value we were given, just like in the other two, and let's write it in the upper left-hand corner. Still, we are not writing anything in this lower part. So to go from grams to moles, so grams to moles, so we're moving this way, we're going to be dividing by the molar mass. Now you learned how to calculate molar mass in another video, so I'm just going to go ahead and give it to you here. I had one Fe and three Brs, so I found the masses on the periodic table and just added them together to get 295.6 grams per mole. Since I'm dividing by molar mass, that means my one mole is going to go on top and my 295.6 grams is going on the bottom. Plug this in the calculator and you'll find 0 0.422801 moles of FeBr3 in this many grams. You'll notice that I kept six significant figures here, and that's because I started with six significant figures in my original value. And that is what I have done consistently throughout this video. Okay, and finally, let's look at moles to grams. So we're going to go from moles to grams this time. And we're going to take the value we were given in the problem, and let's go ahead and write that in the upper left-hand corner. Nothing goes at the bottom. To go from moles back to grams, we're going to multiply by molar mass. So we need the molar mass of NaCl, which is 52.5 grams per mole. Okay. This time, since we're multiplying by molar mass, we're going to put our one mole on the bottom 
and our molar mass on the top, which is 52.5 grams per one mole. So it also makes sense here. We are multiplying these two values. So 9.889 multiplied by 52.5 grams gives you 519.2 grams of NaCl. Again, I had four sig figs originally, so I kept four in my final answer. Here is the full chart. So if you want to pause this video and go ahead and write this down in your notes, that would be very beneficial to you. So go ahead and pause the video, write it down. And in this video, you or after watching this video, you should now be able to convert back and forth between moles and atoms or molecules and between grams and moles. Thanks for watching.